Today we have Solvoya with us. Uh, Solvoya is uh, one of our Fund One portfolio companies. They are tackling supply chain planning. Most of us think, at least the ones who don't know anything about supply chain, think that this is a problem that's probably already solved. Turns out it's not. And uh, Solvoya is at currently uh, doing this at the global level with major global brands. And today they will share with us what, what the problems are, how they are tackling it, and how they are helping these uh, big conglomerates around the world with this solution using technology. Uh, we have Omar Nilifar and Yosun from, uh, from the Solvoya company with us. And uh, I'm going to leave it with them to take it away. Go ahead, guys. Thank you very much, Eli. Hi, guys. I'm Nil. I uh, head up customer success for Solvoyo in addition to managing operations. And uh, I came with almost two decades of uh, corporate America experience into Solvoyo. You can actually consider me the diversity on the team when you look at like 98% of our employees, you know, being engineers. So very exciting journey so far. And I have two members of our executive team joining me today. Uh, they are true supply chain experts, uh, Omar and, and uh, Sena. If you guys want to say a few words about your background, that would be great before we start. Omar, sure. go ahead. Ladies I'm first. Sure. Ladies <laughs> first. Hi, I'm Asena Yosun Denizere. I am uh, one of those industrial engineers in Solvoya, one of the many. Uh, I'm, my my uh, background is actually split uh, across uh, Silicon Valley. San Francisco retail, New York retail worlds, uh, and uh, many years of 20 plus years of uh, doing um, planning, pricing, optimization uh, solutions uh, across different industries, but mostly uh, specializing in retail. And I'm currently heading the retail solutions for Solvoya. Thank you, Asana. This is, uh, my name is Omer Bakalbasi the Chief Innovation Officer of uh, Solvoya, and uh, I've been involved in supply chain before even it's called supply chain, uh, and uh, spend all my life uh, in and around solving business problems using high levels of math and, uh, and optimization. And I still take great pleasure in uh, doing that and working with, uh, with the young and smart engineers around the world and uh, looking forward to sharing some of our experiences with you today. Great. Well, we are the, the team who's been passionate about supply chain, but what happened lately is that all of a sudden the world also understood the importance of supply chain. Actually, it impacted me quite a bit because uh, all of a sudden my kids also uh, thought that uh, mommy is doing something sexy. Finally, uh, because they understood that uh, if uh, there was any uh, ice cream, uh, uh, you know, stuck out, it was because someone didn't manage their supply chains uh, correctly. So what's been happening over the last uh, 14, 15 months because of the pandemic is that the world has been experiencing uh a lot of stock outs. But what's interesting is that, you know, most of the time it's viewed as a toilet paper problem. But when you look at different industries, uh, you know, anything from, uh, you know, women uh, uh, dyeing their uh, uh, hair at home to a lot of the families getting into home cooking, the demand supply uh, imbalance has been actually seen during pandemic in, in the case of a lot of these um, uh, products having excessive demand. So it put pressure on the supply chains to figure out how to really respond to a demand that never uh, was experienced before. And on the other hand, there, the demand supply um, uh, imbalance was uh, uh, experienced in low supply or low sales in, in many other industries. So when you look at some of the, uh, the research that uh, was done in the industry, overwhelming majority of uh, uh, industries were actually negatively impacted by uh, what was happening in the, uh, the pandemic. And sure enough, you see a nosedive in, uh, uh, this is a specific statistics from Canada, but for certain industries, the demand for certain products went down so significantly uh, that also was uh, uh, manifested in uh, manufacturing sales uh, across you know, many different industries. 
So what does this really mean from a macro perspective? Okay, so the supply chains always existed for many years uh, for all the physical goods, right? We are, especially in the sole lawyer context, we are mostly focusing on retail and uh, consumer packaged goods supply chains. And, uh, and one way or another, they were existing. But what forced, what pandemic forced these uh, uh, supply chains or supply chains leaders to, to do is a bit different. Firstly, they had to realize that if they, if they manage their supply chains in a silo, uh, they really couldn't get any fast decisions out of those uh, silos because they can even identify where the problems were happening. They couldn't make smart decisions because they couldn't really understand on a high level basis, you know, have full visibility to drive uh, any of the smart decision making. So uh, pandemic actually drove this out of the box thinking that blew out these silos that we have been talking for many, many years, but uh, finally it's happening. And this whole concept of digital supply chains became extremely important. So early adopters in, in this uh, journey already went ahead and we will give you some examples of those early adopters today. We're gonna give you one example from the retail industry, world's fast, uh, fifth fastest growing retailer. It's actually an emerging market example. And then we're going to give you a CPG example. It's actually a division of a huge multinational. It's a U.S. company that actually were uh, a lot more advanced in thinking that they needed this digital supply chain way ahead of uh, their peers, way ahead uh, uh, you know, of uh, uh, pandemics happening. But yet there is a huge opportunity in the world uh, uh, that you know uh, will uh, eventually create a roadmap for digitizing their supply chains, and and Gardner is also recognizing that with a uh, a very detailed uh, um, research. So what do we really stand for? So that's wonderful. This is kind of the headwinds. I mean, sorry, tailwinds. This is great. But what do we really stand for? So our modus operandi from the beginning is to create autonomous supply chains, meaning that we would create recommendations out of our, our uh, platform. And these recommendations would be of such high quality that they would be executed without massaging. So similar to a self-driving retail store or self-driving car, think of this in the context of a self-driving supply chain. Decisions are being made from demand all the way to transportation in an automated fashion and the platform really deals with exceptions. So this is kind of the nirvana that we uh, uh, have established with our existing clients, but we also recognize that it's a journey. So in order to really get to fast decision-making in the supply chain, you ought to do certain things. And that the first thing that you need to do is to obviously create a digital platform of all of your internal data, so everything that is coming from different silos, different supply chain functions, put them on the same platform, understand the relationships between uh, the, the internal system. But then, as COVID has, has shown, you also ought to add some external data into the picture because without the existence of your external supply chain, your ecosystem, such as your customers, and such as your suppliers, that you're not going to be able to really drive the right outcomes that uh, uh, that you want to uh, do. And and we this was shown during COVID because you know every everything was fine within your own supply chain, but if something went wrong in your suppliers' network, then you really needed to identify that early, detect it, and really come up with the mechanisms to respond to it. So that really comes with being digital. And, and managing this data, which is a, a major issue. So we have uh, some automation also built into making sure that data actually is clean starting off the, uh, the project, but also stays clean throughout the, uh, the journey uh, that the client uh, has with us, but then adding some intelligent work in there. So, you know, tell me before uh, I go out of stock so that I can take action. Tell me before, I actually uh, go excess stock. So all of these mechanism, which is called predictive analytics, driven by AI machine learning tools, allow you to become a lot more intelligent 
uh, on top of your digital platform with the uh, the goal of automating most of your decisions, converting these com complex supply chain decisions into simple ones, and then manage those that you cannot automate with exceptions. So that's basically the Solvoyo promise. And we talked about uh, you know how we can actually process some signals, whether it's a uh, a vendor problem that is not that is causing me uh, potentially a stuck out quickly identifying and changing my plans internally became a, a huge issue. This is also a, a capability. So I'll just stop here. Omar, can you just spend two minutes on what really COVID and then overall digital supply chains meant in the context of software capabilities? And then with that, we'll turn it over to Asena to give us the first use case. So go ahead, please. Yes. Um... For those who are not totally familiar with uh, what a supply chain planning function set is, this is prime. This is basically it. So our company, Solvoyo, uh, takes part in almost all of the supply chain planning functions, which includes everything from demand planning to inventory to supply planning to transportation. And of course, these are uh, uh, planning functions they take you through day-to-day -day operations. And then there are other tactical and strategic elements of supply chain, such as the network design. How many DCs do I have? Where should I be uh, stocking them? What is my growth plan? Where do I invest in terms of capacity? These are the more strategic and tactical decisions. Turns out our digital platform houses not only these functions that allow you to uh, operationalize uh, your, your, um, your plans, but also um, perform some tactical and strategic decisions such, such as um, where, you know, how much transportation do I purchase? All of those are on, on, on the same platform. Uh, the, uh, the platform is flexible in terms of extending itself to internal and external supply chains, as Neil has said, which means uh, allowing external data, such as anywhere from social media data to weather data being introduced into this digital platform as an input to make better uh, decisions, uh, react to real-time uh, events, and, uh, and uh, be a, a better vehicle for you to do better decisions. So that's the space we operate and the service. I think the best way to understand what we do is through our case study. So Asena, go ahead with the first one. Yes, uh, so as uh, Neil mentioned, uh, our uh, customers covering uh, retail and CPG industries, they all had some uh, level of impact uh, from the COVID-19 crisis. Uh, and one of those that actually ended up uh, taking the challenges head on and doing really well is this uh, world's fifth fastest growing retail chain. It's a convenience store chain. Uh, they've been a uh, customer for about uh, eight, nine years now, and they went through a, a pretty early on uh, digital transformation with us uh, so they could scale uh, to the 10,000 plus stores that they are, have right now. Uh, and uh, what we did for them uh, included demand forecasting, inventory management, uh, store level replenishment, as well as DC procurement automation, and all of those work in an integrated fashion. Um, so they have uh, all of these processes uh, being driven by Solvay recommendations, and uh, their uh, roles involve uh, providing accurate inputs into the system so the recommendations come out uh, in a uh, way that can immediately be applied uh, and also go through a, a, a approval process that's very limited uh, where a majority of the decisions uh, at the store level is about 99 percent uh, are automated uh, and only less than one percent are uh, through manual intervention and for the dc procurement it's about 70% acceptance uh, for the DC purchasing recommendations. Can we go to the next slide? 
and uh, for the same a uh, retailer, uh, since they grow so fast and they keep opening about a thousand stores every year, uh, the other uh, solution that we provided is to help them with their network design. Uh, with uh, 200 new stores, uh, they are opening a new DC, a distribution center. So the uh, ongoing challenge for them is where to locate these uh, distribution centers and which stores these distribution centers uh, service in order to uh, minimize their overall logistics costs. So that's another uh, way uh, we've contributed to their growth uh, through this network design solution that we provided. And uh, this uh, helped them uh, reduce their uh, total cost to serve by about 4.7%. Uh, and uh, significantly reduce the average trip distance uh, from DCs to the stores by 42.1%, which is very significant uh, given in their uh, country, uh, the gas prices keep going up. So the logistics cost is actually a pretty significant cost uh, for their business. Next. Um, and as you can see in their growth uh, graph, uh, just around the time, uh, they started implementing Solvio solutions about 2013, 2014. Uh, their growth uh, started significantly picking up. So between 2008 and 2013, uh, they had opened about uh, 1,800 stores. And since their digital transformation, they scaled up exponentially almost uh, because they are growing in all dimensions. They're opening new stores. They're opening new DCs and also they're adding new suppliers to their network. So this yeah. was all facilitated uh, with the Solvoyo planning and analytics platform. Asena, I think it's also helpful to uh, note that we're also extending their internal supply chain to incorporate their vendors. So we're building a digital platform uh, to incorporate their top vendors uh, initially into the mix so that they can actually share you know, forecasting and, and pure information so that the supply chain synchronization is not just limited to the internal retailer that it incorporates their uh, vendors because their vendors are uh, extremely critical in their success to achieve the right level of availability. And during COVID, you mentioned that these guys, especially during those high months of April and May last year, grew over 50%, but they managed to keep their stock outs only at 3%. So yes. this was a major improvement or accomplishment rather, where you know they, they were able to uh, differentiate themselves significantly from their competitors because they they already had invested in uh, this uh, uh, digital platform that allowed them to automate a lot of these decisions or identify fast selling SKUs so that they can immediately take actions. Yes, I was actually co going to come to the specifically the uh, COVID challenges. Oh, um, with the uh, with the digital platform under their belt. <laughs> Uh, they were actually, uh, in a way, uh, um, pretty well set up uh, to address uh, exceptions uh, and alerts and take pr proactive actions. Uh, with the COVID, of course, we all know uh, there was sudden peaks in certain categories. Neil mentioned some of the ones that globally, you know, started stocking out. Uh, there were uh, supplier lead time variations, again, speaking to their external network. Uh, the suppliers, uh, while they were normally maybe making deliveries every in every two or three days, uh, due to either their manufacturing capacity limitations or logistical limitations, their lead times kept shifting, uh, which meant uh, the uh, safety stocks and the purchase orders need to uh, evaluated and adapted to the new uh the new uh schedules and the new constraints so all of that uh with with the type of network that we described with 200 these these hundreds of vendors and thousands of stores to being able to do all of that uh, in a dynamic and automated fashion and learning uh, from the recent history leveraging uh, machine learning uh, technology helped them significantly uh, and uh, what was most significant success uh, from their uh, words is be able to 
see what's coming really fast uh, within uh, a week or two and start taking actions upstream in their supply chain. So they immediately uh, started taking action uh, with the suppliers, manufacturers, adjusting their purchase orders, uh, getting the first priority, you know, since they were very proactive uh, and stocking up their DC. So they were able to serve the stores uh, in a fairly seamless fashion. I mean, with uh, certain categories going up uh, in 50% or more in demand, uh, experiencing only 3% uh, difference in uh, stockouts was really insignificant given some of the, uh, you know, industry experiences with the going, you know, going on uh, for days with empty shelves uh, in, uh, in especially, you know, developed countries, we saw that happening. Uh, so they were overall uh, very uh, proactive, very digital, uh, and uh, only, you know, interfered where there were certain exceptions that really needed their human touch uh, and uh, speeded up uh, their omni-channel expansion as well. So they had, uh, since their daily operations were being taken care of uh, by a solid planning platform, they were able to actually make those uh, quick operational changes to start and expand last mile delivery to their customers, you know, who were, um, who couldn't go to the stores because of the lockdowns, especially with the senior citizens, uh, 65 plus uh, years of age, they were very limited in their moment. So they were able to serve their customers uh, and uh, came out uh, even stronger, uh, you know, at the end of the uh, COVID experience uh, in omnichannel uh, services. Okay, great. Uh, thank you, Asena. So this the this is the consumer packaged goods example from the U.S. that uh, we mentioned that we would cover. So Omar, could you please walk us through? There's two pieces to this. The first is the digitization of their ex external supply chain. Another one is the um, uh, for the same client automating end-to-end -end decision making. Uh, so please, Omar, go ahead. Sure. Uh, just to close up uh, on Asena's case study uh, this is widely written up so if you want more information about it um, just you know type in a a101 solvoyo and forbes or or um, you know it, it's publicly written up it's it's uh, a, a pretty good story uh, of how how to react to covid uh, automatically using a digital platform as well as uh, you know advanced levels of math uh, which is kind of our nirvana as well. But, but I'm going to talk about a company and the journey that we are taking together, where we started, uh, if you recall Nilofer's uh, representation, we have to have a digital platform in order to go to the ultimate uh, goal or reach the ultimate goal of uh, full, uh, autonomous decision-making. You have to have a digital platform where you organize your data, make sure your data is internally consistent and correct. And then you put some intelligence into it. You simplify the processes so they can be automated to the degree that they could be automated. And then uh, walk into first exception-based planning, then perhaps full uh, decision automation afterwards. So with this client where we took them, it's a CPG company. And they were handling about a typical to a CPG company, about 16,000 SKUs and serving about 90,000 service locations. So uh, as opposed to CPG serving directly to a retail channel, these people, uh, this company not only served a distributor channel, but served some of its customers on its own. So it's a pretty complicated network and uh, it lacked the level of dig digitization for them to uh, support a dramatic growth that they were experiencing and that they wanted to plan for. Uh, imagine growing a company without the level of uh, the, the uh, level of automation uh, or a digital platform. And uh, and we've seen the pre in the previous example, the A101 growth is is enabled by that uh, digital platform. And this was the first thing we did here. So everything that was previously done in Excel and and people based processes and 
and uh, you know inconsistent data that is kept in tribal knowledge in people's minds had to be digitized and that didn't take a whole lot of time but it took some um, it took a while and we made sure that their basic data uh, is cleaned up and remains clean uh, we uh, link them up with their uh, third-party logistics providers, third-party manufacturers, and their key vendors. So all the information exchange is done digitally. And by that, I don't mean sending an Excel through an email. Uh, it is actually communicating, uh, you know, purchase order messages, receipt messages, advanced shipping notices, and, and other similar uh, data uh, using uh, API-based, standards-based APIs or electronic data interchange formats, as usually called EDI. So at the end of the day, this brought in a level of consistency in data and uh, allowed the digital platform to be uh, scaled, to, to be scalable, let's say, to many, many uh, times. And that was the necessary condition for us to do um, what we've done next, which is actually put in end-to-end -end planning and analytics on this platform. And think of this as uh, a lot of the intelligent step, intelligence putting step, as well as much of the, uh, they are not totally autonomous, I would say, but uh, much of their planning is done through exceptions. Now, uh, look at those numbers. There are 16,000 SKUs serving 90,000 service locations, and they have they have four planners who touch this platform. Perhaps they uh, uh, you know uh, uh, boss as well once in a while. You're talking five people managing 16,000 SKUs across this kind of a uh, a complicated network uh, is only enabled through first digital. Uh, platform second, putting a level of intelligence into the numbers so that these four or five people only handle the exceptions and much of the demand forecasting. At the bottom, you can see the solutions we deployed, inventory optimization, production planning, purchase order recommendations, and uh, sharing data uh, with vendors uh, is, is, is enabled and uh, at the end of the day, uh, uh, they have experienced much higher OTIFs. OTIFs stands for on time in full. It's a very tough measure. Uh, uh, you have to be both on time and in full in meeting customer requests. Uh, so if you are meeting all the requests, but you are a little late, you're up, you get a zero. If you're on time, but don't meet uh, uh, the, the requirement fully, then up, you get a zero. So it is one of these tough uh, customer service metrics that they have experienced significantly and uh, they are ready for growth and experience and growth. Currently, we are about six months into the go live uh, on this end-to-end -end planning and analytics space. And uh, we're already experiencing over 50% user acceptance rate. Um, if you recall, uh, what Nilofar has said, user acceptance rate, this 50% refers to the percent of the decisions across this platform. Demand forecasting, inventory optimization, per, uh, production planning, purchase order recommendations. All of those um, planning functions, their output is accepted as is, without change. The other 50% is still accepted and, and, uh, and, and is used with change. And what happens is that we track the change and the reason for them not accepting our recommendation and going with something else. And then that feeds back into our um, learning platforms so that this user acceptance rate goes up and up, perhaps all the way up to 99.5% as we experienced as in, in A101. So uh, hopefully uh, these two examples have given you an idea of how we help clients go from a digitalization journey, starting with a digital platform, adding intelligence, and eventually having them make these very smart decisions in an autonomous manner. Uh, and of course, we as uh, in the individuals here, as you've seen, as well as the company are open to any questions, contacts, anything that you 
have uh, in mind uh, or are ready to discuss. So, Nilufar, back to you for close. Sure. Thank you so much. Uh, you know, for the longest time, there has been a lot of innovation going on on the uh, customer facing side. What the pandemic showed is, is that in order for those promises to be made on the front end to the customers, uh, the back end, the kitchen has to be also innovated. The back end, the kitchen, which is a supply chain, also has to see uh, uh, digitization and, and has to be really benefiting from uh, a state of the art, next generation um, uh, uh, solutions and tools like Solvoy 